Analytics is the single most important tool available to content creators, and it has been completely neglected by YouTube's freedom-loving competition. In my view, this is really holding back sites like Odyssey. Resistance to censorship is great, but it's only one aspect a competent individual must consider when deciding where to produce their content. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert on the creation and the promotion of websites, and I don't know the inner workings of any of these sites so take this as just one perspective on the matter. My criticism here is targeted mostly at Odyssey because I think it's the most serious of the YouTube competitors, but I have similar issues with sites like BitChute and Rumble. Furthermore, I bring this up because I think it is a perfectly solvable problem on the part of Odyssey, and I want to see proper competition to YouTube but that is not going to happen until it's addressed. I think to demonstrate my point here, it would be best to just show you, but before I do that, I would ask that you hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this. <sighs> So I have here my Odyssey homepage, some Alex Jones stuff, yada yada yada. Uh, I go over to Creator Analytics, and boom, this is it. Uh, I can't get per video analytics. I click on this, it just takes me to the actual video itself. Uh, you know, nothing helpful there really. Just the view count, uh, 17 followers all time. You know, uh, based on these analytics, I don't think I could. Uh, get to 50 followers with the amount of time I've spent uh, creating videos where on YouTube I'm at 763 subscribers now. So let's just compare the uh, analytics here. Yeah. Uh, let's go to this video. So, you know, it shows me over time where I'm getting views. So, you know, uh, clearly something's happened here because there's a little bit of a change in trajectory. Uh, I can't remember if I changed like the thumbnail or something like that. I also got to see the watch time and how many where I'm, when I'm getting subscribers. So I got a lot of subscribers when it was first released, but not many after that. So maybe that says something. I can see the concurrent viewers for the premiere, which is also useful. And this, this is key, the retention graph. I look at these things all day long. I love retention graphs. This is basically showing how many people who clicked on the video are still watching at different points. And there is all sorts, you know, I can see also the relative retention rate. So, you know, it's above the average line for the whole video, which means this is probably a, a pretty good video for retention. And there'll be people like Mr. Beast will have it right along the top the whole time because he's an expert at YouTube. And, you know, on YouTube, you can tell when your video is doing good because you have this retention. You can see that people may be uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a bit of a drop off here in the beginning because apparently people click on the video and then they think, mm, I don't think this guy is going to deliver on his thumbnail, so I'm going to click off. I'm going to go watch something else. So you know that's that's very useful stuff. Uh, you know, also I can see where the traffic's coming from, so I can see this is a very search-heavy video. Uh, most people are probably just searching up Adam something, uh, democracy or whatever, and then it comes up. I have other videos which are very uh, browse features based though. So this is a stream I've just done, uh, you know, like maybe an hour ago now. Uh, very heavy on browse features, which is just like, you know, it gets suggested on your homepage or whatever. That's uh, that's what I try to optimize for a lot of the time. You know, sometimes I'm optimizing for search though. So, but I can but I can make those optimizations at the point. I am, I am able to see whether my optimizations are actually working. Uh, it's not even just the per video analytics either. I have, you know, on this whole channel wide analytics, I can, you know, see where I'm getting views. If I go to like last 365 days, here's, here's something I've noticed, um, you know, over here, it might, it might seem that I'm doing better over here because wow, look at all those views I'm getting. And this is actually uh, from a lot of uh, shorts content I was producing at the time that gets a hell of a lot of views, but then I go on to watch time. Boom, I'm getting way more watch time these days because I'm doing far longer videos. Uh, this spike here is from the B debate, which was a very long, I think, three hour video. And you know, even though it has abysmal retention, a couple of people watch through the whole thing, and that really bumps up my watch time. And I'm looking for a lot of watch time. Watch time is just not even an existent thing here. I, I, I have no clue what my watch time is here. So, you know, this. It's night and day. It's night and day, the differences. I will never make a criticism if I don't have a resolution.
Now, from the perspective of the viewer, the lack of analytics might be a feature rather than a bug. The modern web is so chocked full of tracking that it makes it a real challenge to browse the web privately. But I don't think analytics necessarily has to reduce one's privacy. I see no reason why an open source analytics software couldn't be provably anonymous. And if there are any data points which do de-anonymize a person, then it could just forego the tracking of these data points. For something like a retention graph, I don't see why this would be in any way necessary. All you need to send over is a couple of timestamps corresponding to what parts of the video were watched. You don't even have to send over who is doing the watching, because it's all going to get aggregated in the end anyway. Now, considering that this video is not really related to anarchism like the rest of my content, it's possible that there are a higher proportion of statists watching this than usual. If you fall into that bucket, or you want to hone your arguments against those that fall into this bucket, watch this video where I present a damning challenge to minarchists.